here in the diapers. No. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but no. Because I wanted to spell a myth slash common question that I get, and that is, can you use diaper cream as a sunscreen because it is zinc? Uh, no, you cannot. I'm sure this offers some degree of, of SPF, but what that is, I could not say, and neither could you. Uh, you can't just go off of, this is a common misconception that the that the percentage of active ingredient in the in the sunscreen or, or whatever is is an indicator of sun protection. It's really not. It has to do with the size of the zinc and how how the product is formulated. So that's wherein you rely on the the MED testing that is mandated to demonstrate the SPF and uh, you know, that's going to, it's not just one, there's not just one ingredient or, or anything like that. It's how the, how the entire thing is formulated. So you're not going to know if, if something is, is a good sunscreen unless that, that testing has been done. And you don't want to make that gamble. So, so no, uh, barrier creams are not sunscreens. Uh, it's got to say a broad spectrum, UVB, UVA, protection, SPF 30 to 50. You need to look for that. Don't rely, don't rely on a diaper cream. Um, but diaper creams are handy for a variety of things. First and foremost, the diaper area of babies who wear diapers. The reason being that zinc oxide uh, is a is a nice barrier, makes a nice occlusive barrier that uh, keeps the skin protected from the um, environment of the diaper. Diapers are are a problem for little baby skin because what happens is there's there's a lot of moisture there. You get maceration. Eventually, the stratum corneum, the top layer of the skin, gets extra extra hydrated. Baby skin is prone to irritation. Compounded with that, the diaper area is an area where there is candida or yeast, so babies can get uh, are more predisposed in. So the moist environment of the diaper is conducive to yeast candida that can break down baby skin, lead to red rashes with um, you know, scaling and um, become comfortable for the baby. And by employing a barrier cream like this, you keep the skin protected from that. The other thing to do though is to, to let, let, let the baby's bottom air out. Um, throughout the day from time to time to, to prevent them from just incubating in, in, a hot, in a hot, sweaty, damp diaper. Even if the diaper is clean, particularly here in Houston, I mean, it's humid and it gets hot. It doesn't breathe particularly well. So, um, you know, it's just a setup for irritation on the skin. And to stay on top of that, using a, a zinc barrier cream uh, as a skin protectant will, will kind of will kind of counterbalance some of that. Baby skin is not fully developed, so the skin barrier is is not not completely there yet. So they're even more predisposed to it. Um, so uh, zinc barrier cream is fantastic. And this Walgreens one, the um, happens to be fragrance free and is a good choice. You could also use you could also use Destin as well. So I'm over in the sunscreens, and I've covered so many of these before. I'm not going to reiterate them check out I have a whole playlist by the way drugstore drugstore skincare I think it's called where I have all of these shop with me videos so I'm not going to go back over all the sunscreens that I've talked about before but Aveeno has a new sunscreen out that I um, recommend it is the Aveeno positively mineral sensitive skin broad spectrum SPF 50 this is fragrance free water resistant mineral only this is a really good choice for somebody with sensitive skin with rosacea and it will it will offer very good broad spectrum broad spectrum coverage it does have fever few in it which um in in products like Aveeno, they fever few is uh some people can be allergic people with like ragweed allergies are you know the actual flower that they'd be allergic to but because it's chrysanthemum the actual but the compound that causes the allergy is uh, parthenolide and they they remove that from skincare products so it tends to not be a problem but this is this is a fantastic one it's gonna leave a significant cast though I've tried it before and it does leave it does leave a cast anytime you rely on an exclusively mineral sunscreen 
it invariably is going to have a cast but oh this is fantastic if you're traveling to hawaii or florida because they have banned certain chemical filters which um check out my hawaii sunscreen ban video if you're curious about that but this would be an option so you don't so you don't get dinged and you can still protect your skin which is very important if you are escaping if you are escaping winter <clears throat> they also make a bigger a bigger container here which is a better value and not any different so that's great i wish they had these in in like a big body bottle a big body bottle um simply protect baby by the way is fantastic and they also have simply protect sensitive here this is a, a new york packaging basically of their uh, banana boats <clears throat> combination sunscreen this doesn't leave doesn't leave much of a cast because because it has some other filters in there so it can use a little less zinc so you get you get your coverage from other other sources in this um, and this is fantastic also if you have sensitive skin um, it's not uh, it's not drying the Aveeno one that I just talked about is going to be more drying uh, but this this is much more moisturizing I've used this one before it's great all right so I'm over here in the men's razors and I um, will draw your attention to the Schick Hydro 5 scents. This is a good um, choice for um, men and women, honestly. I think sometimes men's razors, they tend to be a better value than women's razors, and they're basically the same thing, just a co different color schematic. But this Schick Hydro 5 scents is a, is a reasonable option. Uh, I uh, reviewed the Gillette the Gillette uh, Pro Shield 5. I'm a fan of that particular razor, but many of you mentioned that you prefer Schick, and their Hydro 5 is a good choice. Um, many people ask me, uh, is it better to use a single blade versus uh, multiple blades? And actually, there was a study that uh, did head-to-head -head comparison between a single single blade razor and the five blade razor, five blade, five blade trumped, uh, five blade trumped uh, single blade in terms of irritation and, uh, and razor burn. And also, um, I will also draw your attention to the fact that of those, of those men in that study, I think something like 69% were African American males. So for those of you out there who are thinking that, that the multiple blades won't, won't work for your hair type, uh, there was, it, it wasn't just, it wasn't just Caucasian males in that study. But the reason I prefer the reason I prefer the Gillette one is that it has that Pro Shield that kind of kind of uh, it acts as like almost a, almost like a life raft around the blades and really can buoy off some of the some of the uh, abnormal forces where you run into that that topography. But yeah, check out my uh, my shave, shaving video where I talk more about kind of the mechanics of shaving. All right, so I want to draw your attention to this La Roche-Posay on Pelios SX sunscreen. Um, this is the only sunscreen that La Roche-Posay makes that is available in the United States that contains Mexeril. Mexeril is a phenomenal sunscreen filter for protecting you against UVA. UVA are the rays that penetrate deeply, age the skin, and contribute to hyperpigmentation and melasma. And the sunscreens in the United States by and large rely on avobenzone for uva i mean they all do this is the exception mexeril is actually approved as a sunscreen filter in the united states so it's made by l'oreal they own it um this is the only one however that that has it that you can buy here in the states however you can buy sunscreens <clears throat> from Europe, from La Roche-Posay, that have Mexeril and have a much higher SPF than this. This is only SPF 15, but the UVA protection from this is going to be very good. We don't have testing here in the United States for our sunscreens to give us a measurement or a, any kind of objective, quantifiable, <clears throat> nu numeric as to the UVA protection in sunscreen, our sunscreens only tell us, SPF only tells you the ability of the sunscreen to protect you from a burn, not from, not from those aging, raging rays. Um, but the reason that Mexeril is better than avabenzone, our, our, main, our main UVA filter, is that avabenzone is very unstable and degrades. Many sunscreen manufacturers have come out with exquisite formulations that you know, stabilize the avobenzone, but it still degrades. So you start losing that UVA protection. You know, it starts declining after you apply it. But with Mexeril, it is, it's gonna be stable on there. So that's, that's fantastic. You still need to reapply it, but I'm drawing your attention to the sunscreen because for those of you who suffer with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation uh, related to healing acne, 
this is a good choice for you to consider, especially if you, especially if you live and um, you know you're mostly indoors all the time, and it's it's very dark. The UV index is low in your area, but you still suffer from melasma or hyperpigmentation. This is a good choice. It's very expensive, unfortunately. I think it's. It doesn't leave a cast whatsoever. This is the tester. No, good, thank you. And it's nice and moisturizing. This is good for, good for acne prone skin, dry skin. If you have rosacea, this might sting a little bit and precipitate a flare, but if you have melasma, consider this one, particularly if you live in, a, in, an, in an area where you don't get a lot, a lot of sunshine, but you're still, you still get UVA. When the sun is out, you still get UVA. Um, you may not burn as readily, but you still get a lot of UVA, so this would be a good, a good winter, winter sunscreen for, for melasma defense. All right, so if you've watched any number of my videos, my drugstore videos, you know, by and large, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the Vichy products because they have fragrance and they're expensive. They're expensive here in the States. I know they're more affordable to those of you, to those of you in other countries. But I do really like their Mineral 89 Booster. This is a hyaluronic acid humectant a gel booster. It uh, is pretty good. I would say it's comparable in thickness to the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Extra Dry Sensitive Skin, the fragrance free one. This uh, underneath your moisturizer is really going to plump up the skin, particularly if you suffer from wrinkles and fine lines around the eyes that you're bothered by. Uh, you could dab a little of this um, around that area and then put put a moisturizer on top and it will it will really hydrate up those areas. The way these work is the hyaluronic acid is a humectant. It just holds on to water in the skin and then um, and then uh, it just keeps it on there. Uh, also glycerin is a humectant in this as well. Um, and so the reason you need to put your moisturizer on, on top is that while it's just holding the water on there, eventually that water is going to evaporate over. So you need your moisturizer on top to seal it in. But Um, if you do this in the in the areas, particularly around the eyes, I find is where where these are most effective. It really will it really will boost up the boost up the skin there, hydrate it up, very gentle manner, and this is fragrance free, non irritating, and um, and it uh, and it will camouflage those those fine lines. This is this is a reasonable choice for an eye cream. Skip all of the eye cream nonsense. It largely those eye creams largely contain irritating ingredients. But this underneath underneath the moisturizer, I mean you can put it to your entire face. But underneath the moisturizer in targeted areas, you'll really see some improvement. I think this is a fantastic product that they have. It is it's expensive here, but for those of you in other countries, uh, if you have it and it's more affordable, this is an alternative to some of the other humectant gel creams I've talked about. Yeah, you see how tricky Neutrogena is here? This, this is the Hydro Boost gel cream. This is the one you have to get the extra dry, uh, the extra dry skin one because it's fragrance free. Put this under underneath the moisturizer and uh, it'll really hydrate up the skin. This one's more affordable than the Vichy one and comparable in thickness. Unfortunately, I don't think the, Wal the Walgreens one is, has fragrance in it, so I don't recommend that one. But as you guys wanted me to touch on the City Shield uh, water gel sunscreen, I don't recommend that one either because it's got it's got that god awful fragrance in it. Their Hydro Boost City Shield Eye Serum could be used similarly to the way I just described for the uh, gel cream, either the Vichy one or the, the Neutrogena one. This one is fragrance free. It's got a little bit more going for it. It's got um, Chondrus Crispus powder in it, which is uh, marine uh, red algae. Uh, similar to how similar to how the Aquatian moisturizers have uh, laminaria extract, uh, those those uh, marine plants, those algae, they make fantastic humectants. So this is actually a little more intense. Uh, 
hydration and, and boosting and, and plumping up of the skin in a benign fashion. Additionally, this also has this also has peptides in it. Peptides, uh, tetrapeptide five, fantastic uh, humectant. So this is definitely going to be definitely going to be more intense focused focused hydration. Skip these mists though. Mists are kind of stupid. All, all of the, the sprays, the water mists, all they do, and this is just perfume. Um, spraying water on your face, it just evaporates and pulls water out of your skin and leads to dryness and irritation. And the majority of facial mists and facial sprays have fragrance in them, so it leaves behind it an irritant residue that can lead to allergic contact dermatitis. Uh, fragrance also has uh, compounds that are, include cinemates that are vasodilators, so it can worsen redness and irritation. So I don't recommend the mists, just a waste of money and uh, not logical. So I've reviewed a lot of Olay products for you guys, uh, both in dedicated videos as well as in drugstore drive-bys, <laughs> walkthroughs, but these are new and I can think of no, no more offensive thing to go smearing on your face. These uh, stick masks, oh god, I, I really just beg the, the uh, personal care product industry, whatever, to stop putting charcoal in things, it's so useless. Um, these are nothing but fragrance and irritants. Kaolin um, is an ingredient that you will find in a lot of moisturizers marketed for acne prone skin and it is an ingredient like bentonite clay that can um, just mop, mop up sebum. So can um, starch, um, aluminum starches you'll see a fair amount and so those of you with oily prone skin, Kaolin uh, is an ingredient in moisturizers to, to look for that'll help kind of cut down on the shine, but ugh, don't do these, don't do these masks. They're just, they're just a nightmare. Rubbing this stick on your face is really going to be irritating. It's going to lead to vasodilation, irritation. I can think of no more offensive approach than rubbing this perfume, perfume stick on your face. Good God. Yeah, the sad thing is, I think like, 60 years ago or so, LA had one product. Now, look at this. Consumerism. These are all just pots and tubes of variations of the same thing. And this is a limited selection. <laughs> Stop the insanity. Stop the insanity. All right, now here's a product I love. This is Prosacea, medicated rosacea gel. What this is, is a um, leave-on precipitated sulfur gel. This is fantastic for not only rosacea, but also for um, acne, uh, seborrheic dermatitis, blackheads, clogged pores. Uh, it's anti-inflammatory. I swear, of any active ingredient in dermatology, sulfur, precipitated sulfur, is uh, one that's fairly easy for people to tolerate. It can be a little drying, but uh, the fact that people with rosacea seem to be able to tolerate it, it, it bodes well for most. Um, so I love I love this particular product. Check out my sulfur video. But this is a fantastic choice uh, for all of those things that I mentioned. And it doesn't have any any irritating ingredients in it. Um, well, I'll take that back. It has Probably glycol can be drying, um, and uh, sometimes people can develop an allergy to diazolidineal urea, which is a preservative. Um, paraben allergy is not as common, but can occur. Uh, parabens, by the way, are not are not deadly. Everybody's always like, have you seen that CeraVe has a paraben in it? I'm like, dude, check out my paraben video. Let's actually talk amongst the North American Contact Dermatitis Society to name parabens the non-contact allergen of the year because they tend to be, they tend to be more eczema friendly than any other preservative out there. As a result of the paraben phobia, which is not substantiated, check out my paraben video. But as a result of the paraben phobia, we've had, we've had to rely on all these other different uh, preservatives to keep the products stable and from becoming contaminated. And those other preservatives tend to tend to lead to contact dermatitis much more much more commonly than, than parabens do. So 
They are they are more of a common. Diazolidineal urea is one, one such example. People dip, are more likely to have problems to that than parabens. Finally, a serum that's not useless. <laughs> this is a Walgreens silicone scar serum. I um, mentioned in my scar video my ingredients for scars. Silicone, um, silicone, and silicone scar, sil silicone creams, silicone scar sheets. Probably the most evidence-based intervention to. Uh, improve the appearance of a scar or to prevent to to improve the outcomes of uh, wound healing voting in, in favor of, of cosmetically acceptable scars um, I like this is a good option just rolled on rolled onto the affected area it really just keeps the keeps the area moisturized and hydrated and, and supple and lubricated but I also love silicone scar sheets either the Walgreens brand or scar away these um, these prevent uh, external friction on the scar, which can, those forces of just rubbing, the skin rubbing can, uh, can you know, irritate the area and make the scar thicker. So this is, this is a really good choice. Keeps it lubricated, keeps it hydrated, uh, cuts down on irritation. Uh, this is just worn on, on the healing area and even, even already formed scars, honestly. You gotta wear it like 24 seven though. That's, that's the hard thing, but. This is, this is probably one of the, the most evidence-based things you can do for a scar. Mederma, unfortunately, with the onion extract, uh, I reviewed this, but onion extract uh, can can uh, actually make, a study actually showed made, made scars appear redder and more irritating, more irritated, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do Mederma. You always ask me about hand hygiene. Talk about, uh, this is probably your best bet uh, as far as hand sanitizing, is Hibiclans or Chlorhexidine. Uh, this this actually is is one of the best things you can do in terms of hand hygiene. If you um, take this, uh, rub it on the hands, let it sit on the skin for a little while, and then rinse it off. This will this will get rid of uh, bacteria. It will get rid of uh, fungi. Uh, very broad spectrum antimicrobial co coverage. This is what they use in surgery. Uh, it's an antiseptic, Hibiclans or Chlorhexidine. Uh, this is probably your best bet. Like, if you were a germaphobe and you go on a plane, uh, see if you can't take a little vial of this uh, instead of instead of soaps and things like that. Um, after you after you lathered on, let it sit on the skin and then rinse it off. Way better than uh, hand sanitizers, although although you have to rinse this off, unfortunately. But yeah, but the hand sanitizers they tend to be obviously very drying and irritating. A lot of them have fragrance and you know after you put them on the skin just becomes colonized shortly thereafter again so it's kind of a temporary fix but chlorhexidine is, is a good skin um, cleanser also if you have hydradenitis superativa you get boils in the armpit armpit groin area that lathered on the skin in those areas cuts down on bacterial colonization and helps helps prevent flares of hydradenitis superativa but if you're somebody who gets butt acne, like around the, related to the gym, or you get you get folliculitis, I have a video on folliculitis, so check that out. But Hibiclans is a good way to decolonize the skin of uh, just any kind of contaminating bacteria you may have picked up that contribute to that. So that's kind of a good way if you were somebody who goes to goes to the gym and gets little, little skin infections frequently. Patients that do not like the idea of using minoxidil they're very resistant to it and i think you guys in the comments of those videos are as well the idea that you have to use something on an ongoing basis is so off-putting to people they hate it like they just want things to go go away understandably so they don't want to have to continue using something so the issue with rogaine um, is it will it, it will improve it will improve hair density it will put more hairs in the growing phase of, of the the hair cycle when you stop it though, those hairs that were in the growing phase then shift to the resting and shedding phase and you shed those and you're back to square one. So people are always fearful that Rogaine worsens hair loss. It doesn't. Minoxidil Rogaine, they don't worsen hair loss. Uh, but uh, that is kind of how they work. So they're, Rogaine, that is kind of how it works. That Rogaine is not, not a cure for hair loss. But Rogaine coupled with other interventions, depending on the type of hair loss you have, it really can bring a lot to the density of your hair. You just have to keep up with it. So minoxidil, I mean, it's been around a long time. 5% uh, is, is a fantastic, fantastic way to go. 2% works as well. It's just uh, 
a little bit slower. Um, these, however, <laughs> the Viscal, these were at a meeting I went to recently. Um, uh, it, they, well, I mean, the problem with these supplements, like I, I said in my supplement video, is they're just not regulated in any way, shape, or form. This has biotin, which uh, can be helpful if you have hair loss related to, to a medication, um, and it can be helpful for brittle nails. It has niacinamide in it, which uh, can cause a little bit of flushing, the niacin, depending on how it's formulated, but it actually is an antioxidant that is of interest to take because it shows that people, people who take niacin, niacin, niacinamide, they, they make fewer skin cancers so long as they're taking it. But when you, when you stop taking the niacinamide, your risk of making skin cancers goes right back. So it's kind of like one of those things like the, the Rogaine, you have to keep taking it. Taking vitamin C, I mean, honestly, you mostly just pee that out. And then the, the marine coll collagens, uh, is, is also what this has in it. Um, you know, I have a video on collagen supplements, uh, but still in a, still in its infancy but coming back to coming back to rogaine um you don't have to use it in the daytime you can use it at nighttime uh you know a lot of a lot of women don't like the idea of putting rogaine on and then like it's it makes it difficult to style the hair um, so you, you can put it on at nighttime. Uh, you just got to be careful that you direct it on the scalp and it doesn't trickle on your face, or you'll get a little you'll get a little hair growth on the face. That's reversible, though. By the way, I personally am a fan of the foam. I find the foam is a lot easier to get on the scalp and localize. You stay stay fit, stay put. So I, I I like the foam and recommend the foam. Oh, you guys. All right. So, you know, I always recommend free and clear shampoo and conditioner. This is, this is Vanny Cream Brown's um, fragrance-free shampoo. It is, it's a little expensive, but uh, for those of you with itchy scalp, sensitive skin, fragrance allergy, you can't go, I mean, you really can't go wrong with, with a Vanny Cream shampoo and conditioner. Depending on your hair type, though, I can't, I can't predict how, how happy you're going to be with the aesthetics of, of what it does in terms of in terms of your hair, but it is it is one that I will typically tell patients to switch to if they're having some kind of scalp issue. But I'm happy to see that Studio 365 has a dupe here for uh, two bucks less. Canada. For those of you in Canada, uh, you have, uh, instead of Vanny Cream, you have Cliniderm. But Vanny Cream told me that they were actually coming to Canada as Vanny Cream, so stay tuned for that. Speaking of fantastic shampoos, Nizoral, I love this. This is a ketoconazole shampoo. Great if you have dandruff uh, lathered to the scalp. If you have seborrheic dermatitis, this is also fantastic. Uh, lathered on the face is a face wash and left on place for a few minutes and then rinsed off. This coupled with uh, a zinc pyrithione shampoo is like a double double duty force. Well, can help, but you gotta do it like Rogaine. You gotta do it consistently and not a cure. As soon as you stop, it can come back. So Nizoral is a, is a great choice. Also, if you are somebody with hair loss, um, ketoconazole shampoo is another thing that we often throw into the mix to improve things because ketoconazole and nizoral um, can uh, oops excuse me can uh, it cuts down on the amount of uh, pterosperm yeast on the scalp and that yeast causes low-level inflammation that can further drive hair loss so using nizoral shampoo to the scalp is is an, is something to add to the the hair loss milieu of of kind of attack. It's not going to cure it, but it it kind of it kind of wipes out a little bit a little one of the little drivers, which is pterosperum. Well, guys, I'm getting the uh, blinky light on my camera telling me that I have blabbed too much, you guys. Today, I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, my motivation in today's video was to go in and find key ingredients like Mexeril. Minoxidil, ketoconazole, and nizoral shampoo, chlorhexidine. Those are ingredients that, as dermatologists, we actually use and actually recommend and have used for a long time, have established efficacy. Versus all this other bunk out there, you know, they're, like I pointed out with Olay, there are thousands of cosmetic products every day in the skincare market, the majority of which do nothing. Um, so, 
you know, stick to stick to simple simplicity and when it comes to skincare, don't try and do exotic things like rose mist, water mist, spray mist, sticks, uh, sprays, masks, serums, da, da 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 I mean, it by and large, it's just layering too much complexity of irritating ingredients on the skin. But I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.